Welcome to Five Good Minutes. You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Mark with David Bowens. Mark chapter 16, verse 16 says, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. I do believe this text has been taken out of context and it makes people and people can walk away from reading this and feel like that baptism is a part of the salvation process. And the truth of the matter is baptism is not salvific because the word of God says that we are saved by grace through faith and not of works, lest any man should boast. And baptism is a is a, and I'm talking about water baptism, just to be clear, is a work of man. And while it is important to our walk and in in our faith, because it is an outward representation of what has already happened inwardly, salvation only comes through the work of Christ on Calvary's cross and our faith and what he has done for us. So we cannot take any credit for it in baptism Uh, saying that if you're not baptized, you're not saved would be taking away from the work of Christ, which is where our salvation rests. It's only specifically in the work of Christ. Uh, Yet baptism is quite important. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 through 18 goes on to say, and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will speak. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Interestingly enough, this really speaks to what is about to actually happen. And if you read uh, in the books of Acts, which comes immediately after, like you have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And then there's the book of Acts, which is literally if you re- consider the timetable, it is immediately after the recounts of the Gospels. So Acts is what happens after the ascension of Jesus and then the disciples go to the upper room and they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they're speaking in new tongues, which you which we just read. And when they were speaking in new tongues, they, the, the, the tongues that they were speaking in was in the languages of all the people who were around them that they weren't speaking. They didn't know these languages yet. When speaking in tongues, all the people of the different ethnic backgrounds that were around heard them speaking in their own languages, which is just an unimaginable miracle right off the top. And from that, Peter taught and saying, these men are not drunk, as you suppose, uh, but then began to speak and preach. And thousands of people were added to the number of Christians that day. Not only that, if you read a little further down in the Acts, in the book of Acts, you'll see in Acts 28 that uh, when Paul was putting together a fire, uh, he got bit by a snake and shook the snake off into the fire. And the people around must have known that the snake was a poison snake. And because Paul didn't get poisoned and nothing happened to him, they thought he was a God. And Paul had to uh, uh, let them know, I'm not a God, but it gave him an opportunity to point them to the one true God through Jesus Christ. And so the signs that he's talking about here, you actually read about if you go further on into the book of Acts and read through them healing people. I mean, even to the point where their shadow as their shadow cast and people were touched by the shadow. They were even healed, not even just their hands. And so you see these signs even affirmed later in scripture. Um, But today, while we while many of us I've had actually friends of mine ask, why don't we see miracles and God move like he was moving in the Old Testament? I really believe that God does move. But I think the things that matter uh, uh, more is as a follower of Jesus Christ. If we proclaim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, what signs matter as we are walking around in this day and age? And I think one of the more important things we should pay attention to and care about is the fruit of the spirit being present in our life. And we can see this in Galatians 5, 22, where the fruit of the spirit is listed as love, joy, peace, forbearance. That's like perseverance gentleness and self-control. If, if, if you don't see any of these kinds of things in your life and you, and you call yourself a follower of Jesus, these are some very clear, practical signs that you can look for in your own life to see the, the, the fruit of the spirit that give evidence to the spirit of God working on the inside of us, causing us to submit our way, our will, and our desires to the way and will of God for us. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.